Hello students, welcome to our physics discussion that is physics in a smart way. So we we'll continue from where we have we had left in the last video. And the issue here will be the issue of the specific heat. Specific heat of a gas. Of a gas. When the topic of specific heat comes in, it can be discussed in the context of a solid, liquid, or a gas. But if you compare a gas with that of a solid or liquid, the gas was a puppy's behavior or a pompous type behavior, all pomp and so, but in fact, not much within. But we know what to do. We have to deal with a gas. We have to bear with it, airs and all that. Okay. So if you consider specific heat, but taking you back just a few seconds to your last class, that internal energy or the more properly change of internal energy, but rather we, we do not care about what our the, the so-called the purists say and all that, internal energy will be equal to degree of freedom by 2 into NRT. NRT. Due to some certain reasons, uh, of course, we should not elaborate now, that is written in the form of not internal energy called this much, but change of internal energy, change of internal energy will be on the right hand side will be involved with the change of temperature, other things will be remaining same. Okay, so that was our issue in the last topic. Once you get hold of that, once you get hold of mm -hmm. that, finding the going for the other things will become easy now. The issue that we discuss now, we are going to now is specific. Okay. Let us create some space and let me remove the formula that change of internal energy equal to degree of freedom by 2 and by that. Okay. So, thereby, when we say specific heat of a gas, I will be inclined to put a word as a prefix that is molar specific heat. There are two types of specific heat one is molar specific heat, other is mass specific heat. Very small difference between them when you find the specific heat on the basis of mass in terms of gram or kg, that is mass specific heat. When you take the mass, but you know for a gas, instead of thinking of a sample of hydrogen as 2 gram or 5 gram, I will be rather inclined to consider 1 mole of hydrogen or 2 mole of hydrogen, 3 mole of oxygen, that is the popular unit of mass. So when you take the unit of mass in term, when you take the mass in terms of mole, that becomes molar specific heat. Let us say, considering linear relationship, because most of the plus two science or 11th, 12th physics is the first order physics, first order physics. So there are there are a lot of linear relationship. Even if relationship is not linear, for small temperature differences and all those things, that is assumed to be linear. So, sort of simplification is made. Okay. So, we got a sample of, and as I told you, gas is a bit peculiar, unlike solid and, and liquid, which behave quite like gentlemen, the behavior of the gas is a bit pompous. Gas says, no, 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 then I am a bit different. Why do you compare me with cellular liquid? My behavior is different. I am aristocratic, something like that. So gas absorbs heat in a in a stylish way, or for different conditions, gas can absorb. For the same temperature difference, gas can absorb different type of heat. Those things we'll be discussing later on. Initially, we don't we don't break your head for that. Let us say we consider. A linear relationship, considering that a linear relationship, we got n mole of gas, n mole of gas, and we increase the temperature by delta T. 
and for that we need to supply the thermal energy heat of about Q. N mole of gas, N mole of gas, for increasing temperature by delta T, we are, we are supplying Q amount of heat. If in place of N mole, I will be having one mole of gas, the same gas, on the same delta T, everybody knows we have to think like a school, a school child, so thereby the Q will be, for the heat, thermal energy will be equal to Q by N. For the same one mole of the same gas, I don't require delta T 10 degree or 20 degree change. I require only one degree, one Kelvin change. So for one Kelvin change in temperature, we know the heat required, that will be equal to Q by N del T. We have to again divide del T. So the quantity that you get here is a bit fundamental because it has got both unitary quantities in it. That says how much heat or thermal energy, if you got no issue with considering heat as thermal energy, how much heat one mole of a gas, one mole of a gas will absorb or release for one for one one temperature one Kelvin temperature change, how much heat, sorry. How much heat one mole of a gas will absorb or release if the temperature changes by one Kelvin? One Kelvin that is known as the specific heat. Usually the symbol is C. C. But if you replace this N or number of moles by the mass in kg or grams, then that becomes mass specific heat. That also has got the same symbol, that is C. So C equal to Q by N delta, so that is molar specific heat. That says how much heat one mole of a gas or one mole of the substance will absorb for a temperature change of one Kelvin. Okay. So once you got hold of those, those things, well, these things, so thereby now we can write it systematically that specific heat, specific heat of the gas will be equal to the formula now comes out to be Q by N del T that is the formula of the specific heat. So if C equal to Q by N del T. Immediately cross multiplying, a student can say cross multiplying Q equal to NC delta. NC delta. But as I told you, the problem is with that, the problem here is that the gas is a bit mercurial in its nature, unlike a solid and liquid, whose behavior is quite gentlemanly, a gas, even if the same gas is there, even if the temperature change is same, even if the temperature change is same, same delta is there, but with other conditions changing slightly, the gas can absorb different amount of heat. My point is that as you will be going in to see, it will be, you may not be clear now, but you have to wait for some time to wait for some time, at least a while, or one or two videos, then you will be knowing automatically and fluidly. So, thereby, even if the same temperature change is there, but if other conditions are like pressure and volume, they are changed and, and something is done with them, they are tampered, the gas can absorb different amount of heat. So, because Q is different, even if N and delta are same, so thereby specific heat will be will be coming different. So due to that, it is usually said a gas has got many different specific heats. In fact, a gas can have infinite number of specific heats. But our job is not to study all those infinite number of specific heats that will be considering in due time. No problem. You don't you don't break your head to that. We are considering only two different specific heats, two important specific heats out of them, 
one is specific heater constant value specific heater constant value here i am giving you the formula without the logical on load but just wait for one video next video the thing will be coming out and becomes crystal clear for you specific heat at constant volume specific heat at constant volume the formula is and that is usually referred as cp usually referred as cp i beg excuse because initially i cannot at this stage i cannot i got other jobs to do i cannot go into it so that will be usually degree of freedom by 2 into r specific heat at constant volume usually has got a formula that is and because we say that's a constant volume what is constant volume and all those things we will be considering in due time no problem at all for you but initially just you depend on me just you have faith on me and take the formula the face value as i said so that is mentioned as cv c with substitute v that is equal to degree of freedom into r by two. specific heat at constant volume okay so why that becomes degree of freedom into r by 2 and all that automatically will become clear no problem the second specific heat is is the specific heat at constant pressure the specific heat at constant pressure heat at constant pressure constant pressure will be equal to will be equal to cv plus r that is a very famous relationship which will be developing r means universal gas constant that will be equal to when you put down the value of cv that will be equal to degree of freedom plus 2 degree of freedom plus 2 into universal gas constant by your 2 so two formula you have to yes 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 that that specific heat is known as cp so cp because it is branded as specific heat at constant pressure specific heat at constant pressure will be equal to degree of freedom plus 2 in the numerator into r by 2 so these two formulas you have to get it into your heart but without logic at present i am not interested to give you any logic okay so if it is so So C V equal to degree of freedom into R by two, C P equal to degree of freedom plus two into R by two. So if that is so, let me clear the space and all that because that has been in the screen for some time. So if you consider, if you consider a monoatomic gas. monoatomic gas degree of freedom we know that will be equal to that will be equal to 3 then cb That will be equal to three R by two. As for the formula we have just got now, then CP that will be equal to degree of freedom plus two in the numerator. Three plus two equal to five, so five R by two. Five R by two. One thing is there that is that is a term that is known as. You have to stop here. I just miss something. A adiabatic exponent that is known as adiabatic exponent. Exponent means power. Adiabatic exponent that is also known as the ratio of the specific heats. ratio of specific heats so if somebody says what ratio versus ratio cp comes first then comes cp cp by cp 
the symbol is usually the Greek letter that is gamma. The Greek letter that is gamma. So gamma is known as adiabatic exponent. Why or how? I'll be telling you. But that is usually ratio of stress units. That's a very handy term. That is usually CP by CP. So if that is so, now coming back to our ideas, to our table form, that gamma, gamma equal to CP by CP. Gamma equal to CP by CP. We know CP equal to 5 R by 2, CP equal to 3 R by 2. So that is 5 by 3. 5 by 3. The value of gamma in a fraction form that is important also that is important in terms of decimal. 5 by 3, 1.67. 5 by 3, 1.67. 5 by 3, 1.67. And delta U, change of internal G. Change of internal G. Delta U, change of internal G. We know change of internal G. Sorry. I have to remove this space, this and change of internal energy. We know delta U. We are talking. I must beg excuse because I jumped into all these calculations without taking away, without making you go through. Delta U equal to degree of freedom by two into by two into N R delta. Okay, what you know? Specific heat at constant volume equal to as I gave you the formula degree of freedom by two into R. So if we take degree of freedom by two into R. in delta u and replace that by cv so thereby the formula will be equal to n cv del t del t v l t i am permitting you to write down this formula so thereby this is a very important formula also delta u equal to n cv del t delta u equal to n cv del t n cv del t in short so here, here we got delta u and delta u must be equal to NCV delta, but you know for monatomic NCV equal to 3R by 2. So thereby we know that it will be equal to 3 by 2 into NR delta. Three by 2 into NR delta. I think that is clear. Let me remove this thing. That I have a exponent comma thing that is already there. You know, copy. And this formula, but this formula must be in your head. There are certain formulas in thermal advice without which we cannot go a step further. And this Now, so we go into, yes, we are talking of some formula, some important formulas of thermodynamics. And this formula that delta U equal to NCV delta is one of them, without which a lot of our job will be left open, will be left an answer. So next gas that you take is diatomic gas. So, so far as the gas is diatomic, you know degree of freedom must be equal to 5. You know CV equal to as you know the formula, degree of freedom by 2 into R. So that is 5 R by 2. 
Sipi equal to, you can do it yourself now, you got the hang of the thing. That is Cb plus R. That is 5 plus 2, 7 R by 2. Okay. Or gamma, which is the ratio of the specific kids, Cp by Cb. That will be equal to Cp by Cb. That will be equal to 7 by 5. That's same as 14 by 10, or that is equal to 1.4. So we can clearly see as the decimal, can clearly see the decimal value of gamma. For monoatomic, it was 1.67. For diatomic, that is 1.4. So as the atomicity increases, gamma is decreasing. Okay, that is a point you have to watch out for. Delta U, or the change of internal energy if the temperature changes by delta T. That will be equal to the formula you know, that is N C B into delta T, C B equal to 5 R by 2. So that will be equal to 5 by 2 into N R delta T. So thereby we know this table indicates, this table is not B, also that doesn't require a big head. Once we got hold of degree of freedom of a quantity, gas, then everything leads from it. Maybe CP, maybe CB, maybe gamma, maybe delta U, or some of you might be wondering what I'll be doing, all those things. These are very, very important quantities. Very, very important quantities that will be that will be starting to clear up in our next video. But one thing else we must we must be you know, knowing all those things, let me clear up here. The formula that we got, delta U, delta U, that is equal to NCB delta T, as I told you, keep in mind that this formula, this formula, has got a very serious status than it looks. It's a universal formula. It's a universal formula. Just like, you know, in kinetic theory, we got a universal formula, just like PV equal to NRT. For an ideal gas will be equal to NRT, that's a universal formula. Anywhere it can be used. It be equal to NRT. This formula also is a universal formula. Sometimes student may be, the student may be having, you may be having reservation. Why I'll be using this formula that contains CB and all that? CB means specific heat at constant volume. Maybe the formula will work at a, uh, at a constant volume process. It may not work for other process, but mark it. CB may be, we, we, when you look from outside, CB appears so, but if you break down CB, we see those quantities that a process cannot change. We got degree of freedom. Once the gas is set up, I said, I said two mole of hydrogen because I mentioned hydrogen, I cannot change degree of freedom. By two into your NR delta. Delta N cannot be changed once you mention that R is universal gas constant. Delta must be specified, otherwise, why you are finding why you are finding on this? So thereby, this is a universal formula, just like the people are at. Thank you. I my video was a bit trust off. If some points or some issues are not clear, you can view it for the second time or third time. It's a very significant portion because our next subsequent classes will depend on the things that you have learned. Okay, thank you again.